Save Mount Diablo board member Margaret Cruz lives on a ranch on the east side of Mount Diablo. The morning of August 16th, 2020, she jumped out of bed at 5.30 to the sound of thunder and lightning. Got up and came out and there was a fire burning that was in Briones Valley. So you could see the whole sky was aglow just over that ridge. Then there was the fire burning here. Then we turned around and looked back towards Round Valley. That whole sky was golden, just a huge fire burning that way. And then you would look up here and way up at the top of the ridge, you could just see a tiny little glow of a fire, just like a campfire almost up at the top of the ridge. So there was all these fires burning all around us in a whole circle. And all day long, it just, barely burned up on the ridge top, but when the sun set about 12 hours later, the winds picked up and by 9.30 at night, we were being evacuated. That was pretty crazy. That fire lasted only a few days and never made it to Cruz's house, but two thirds of her family's property burned, mostly oak woodlands and grassland. We're in the Marsh Creek drainage here. It's the 3,000 acre deer zone, part of the SCU complex of fires. And we were concerned that it would stretch in all directions, but it pretty much stayed on the east side of Morgan territory down into Round Valley and then was being driven south into Los Vaqueros. This is the most confined part of the SCU fires, about the same size as the 2013 Morgan fire and dwarfed by the fires to the south, which were 120 times larger. But in the beginning, this was threatening and exciting. You know, 3,000 acre fire. <laughs> no one had any idea that 18 days later, there would be 400,000 acres stretching down almost to Pacheco Pass. The SCU, or Santa Clara Unit Complex of Fires, was the third largest fire in California history. But it wasn't as destructive as some. 31 people died in fires elsewhere in the state. And though SCU accounted for 9% of the total acreage burned, it had only 2% of the damage or destroyed structures that year. Outcomes here were better because the Diablo Range is arid, rocky, rugged, and sparsely inhabited. And park agencies, including the East Bay Regional Park District and the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority, have purchased land buffering the places where most people live. It's the kind of place where it's still possible to have a good fire with fewer losses and many gains. Save Mount Diablo knows a lot about good fires. Founder Mary Bowerman's book chronicles the floristic abundance after a big fire on the mountain in 1931. It suggests that fire is an intrinsic part of the Coast Range ecology. After the Morgan Fire of 2013, Save Mount Diablo gave grants to researchers interested in studying the mountain's recovery. It staged yearly bio-blitzes in the burn zone. It focused its Mary Bowerman Science and Research Colloquium on fire ecology. It also helped a reporter, namely me, Joan Hamilton, shadow researchers and eventually publish 19 Morgan Fire stories in Bay Nature magazine. And what did we find? Well, within weeks after the Morgan Fire, shrubs and trees had re-sprouted. Flowers popped up that hadn't been seen in the Mount Diablo area for 40, 80, even 125 years. Unusual amphibians, such as red-legged frogs and tiger salamanders, survived and were thriving. Botanists cataloged a rich seed bank of rare species beneath once impenetrable stands of chaparral. Sixteen insects were added to the list of animals known to live on the mountain. Park visitors raved about the size and abundance of the wildflowers. Exactly what will happen this time after the much larger SCU fires is hard to predict. California's in a drought. Temperatures are rising. A climate crisis is causing changes we don't fully understand, which makes it a perfect time to take a closer look. As with the Morgan fire, 
suddenly this huge area is laid bare for us to examine from the comfort of walking through vast open spaces versus squeezing through chaparral, ripping our clothes. <laughs> So Save Mount Diablo is launching a project called Diablo Range Revealed. Over the next three years, we'll produce articles, photo galleries, and videos about the plants, animals, and ecology of the heart of the Diablo Range, from Mount Diablo to Pacheco Pass. The project is also about conservation. Save Mount Diablo is known for its work protecting the lands in the northern part of the range. That work continues. But during this time of extreme fires and weather, the organization is also focused on the larger natural system of which Mount Diablo is a part. Room to roam and genetic diversity matter when it comes to making the whole range, including our namesake mountain, more resilient. All this land has been private and locked up forever. Only 24% of the Diablo range is in some way protected. And my goal is to take this formerly blank piece of geography and fix it firmly in people's minds. And I'm going to do a deep dive. I'm going to learn the geography of 620 square miles over the next three years. And there are going to be all these people sharing this obsession. Diablo Range Revealed will help you explore places a little off the beaten track for most Bay Area people, but deeply connected to the places we already love. Along the way, we'll introduce you to some of the people who know these lands best, including ranchers, naturalists, scientists, and land managers. You'll learn about the threats facing these lands, including water projects, housing developments, and in the Corral Hollow area, the expansion of an off-highway vehicle park. Rancher Celeste Garamendi lives with her husband, Mark Connolly, on the family's 9,000-acre ranch southeast of Livermore. She's become a leader in the fight to protect Corral Hollow. If you look down the ravine right in front of us, this is called the Mitchell Ravine, and it's a major watershed that feeds into the Corral Hollow Creek, but also the northern part of it is within what we identify and refer to as Tesla Park, which is planned for OHV recreation. If Tesla is opened up to OHV use, then that entire corridor is cut off by OHV recreation. It is directly in the path of the critical linkage habitat corridor, which is the lifeline of the Diablo Range. One of the scientists will be studying the blackened slopes of the Diablo Range this spring is botanist Heath Bartosh. He's already completed eight post-fire studies in California's coast ranges, from Clear Lake to Corral Hollow, and he's looking forward to heading farther south. Fires are such a siren for naturalists. It's so pleasurable to be out there and see new things in such an abundance that you're hoping for that great wildflower display. It's grounding because we're Californians and fire is a part of us as much as it's a part of the landscape. Now it's gotten a little out of hand because of our past management practices, but um, it's something that I think we should embrace, learn to live with, and um, not so much look forward to, but understand its impact and its recovery. In our next episode, we'll talk with Bartosh and Forest Service ecologist Hugh Safford about their initial impressions of the SU fire's effects. In episodes that follow, we'll visit Mark Connolly and Celeste Garamendi. We'll report on the fate of the area's oaks and pines. We'll identify the region's fire-following plants and tell you where to find them in the most spectacular post-fire wildflower displays. Please join us in the fire zone for Diablo Range Revealed.